Hi, in this video I will show you how to create a coil winding machine. This is not a fully automated machine, but it will reduce the total time of creating a winding significantly. So I found an old drill next to our garbage collection unit. I removed the cover and these are the internal parts, a gearbox, a motor and a switch to control the speed of rotation. So basically these are the main components that we need to create this coil winding machine together with some wood and nuts and bolts. Okay, so let me I show you the variable speed uh, switch. So I connected it to a 12 volt power supply. So if I press it, obviously it will rotate. And if I press it more, it will rotate at higher speed. And then if I change the gear, it will rotate much slower. Um, basically we can control the speed of rotation. All right, so this is the schematic. I used all my creativity to make this drawing. Uh, there are some wooden blocks that will hold the motor and the gearbox and then we have a screw rod that will go into this and a two wooden block that we create some uh, cut on it so then the coil former can be placed in between them and it will be clamped there so this one will be connected to a foot pedal so when i press with my foot and this one will rotate and basically the wire can come here and with my hands i can put the wire uh, nicely on this coil former so this is another schematic so for foot pedal i'm going to use two wooden block and we'll remove this switch from this wire put it here and basically two long wire will be connected to it one goes to power supply and one comes back to this motor and this is the side picture, the motor, the gearbox, and these are those wooden blocks that clamp the coil former. So we can have a coil former with different diameter or with different length. And even we don't need to use a cylindrical coil former, we can use any other, even rectangular coil former, because this anyway will clamp it and it keeps it in the center. Okay, so first step, let us make the foot pedal. All right, so the first step is to create the foot pedal. I cut two pieces of wood, equal size. This is 5.5 centimeter, this is 14.5 centimeter, but you can make it any size you want. So first I'm going to remove a part of this wood so that this switch goes inside it and basically it uh, stays fixed. So I am going to create a Okay, so I have to carve this part out of the wood. I am going to use this tool. Okay, so now the switch will fit here, that is what we want. And uh, so now we'll create a cut here so that this one sits on top of this switch properly. So something like this, now it actually fits into this and basically I can proceed with the next step. Alright, so I have soldered the wire to the switch, so this is the input, these are the output and this comes here, this is the foot pedal. So I want to bring this wire from here, I didn't have a clamp, so I cut a bit of wood and I'm going to glue it here. 
so that both input wire and output wire come from the front of the foot pedal. To hold the gearbox and the motor somewhere in the middle of air, I have created these wooden blocks. Uh, so to create the holes, basically you use a hole saw with different sizes because I have different blocks with different holes on them. And then of course normally you use the drill to create the holes here. So very important is that when you want to create them, uh, align them so that uh, the holes are exactly aligned with each other. So when you want to put the screws, they can end up uh, the same place. So because this one has uh, this kind of edge, that helps me to hold it together. So basically this one goes here, or maybe like this. And then this one can come here. So now I can use some bolts and nuts to hold this together. And then the motor comes there and this last piece will be placed. So I put the bolts here. So this basically holds this very sturdy. And then put the cover of this. Okay, so then we have the motor and this one goes here. I've cut it some screw rods into pieces so that I can put these together. All right, so I tighten everything together and this is the final product. And on the back side, I put this connector so I can easily connect the motor to here and from the switch, it will come to this part. And if I want to disassemble it, everything is very simple. So now I will connect it to power supply and we see how it rotates. Yeah. Of course, if I have the switch, we can control the speed of the switch with our foot. Okay, so the foot pedal is now ready. This is the switch, top part, and the wires are connected, input and output. Now I use a tape, this type of tape, to keep everything together. So when you put the tape, you must make sure that you don't press the top part because you want the original situation to be like this without uh, being pressed. Okay, so now the foot pedal is completed and also everything kept together. Alright, so I decided to change the plan a little bit. At first I have created these things, these two. Basically I use hole saw to create these trenches, but the size of the hole saw that I have are not exactly the same as these pipes. So I had to use two hole saw and make these trenches a little bit bigger. So this creates some problem because when I put the pipe here and I tighten it, it's likely that uh, the axis of this pipe is not exactly on the axis of the middle rod. So when it rotates, it's kind of wobbles. It doesn't matter, but it has a little bit of wobbly into it. So I decided to change the plan. 
So I've created these wheels and uh, so basically now I can put one of them here and another one here and I can tighten it the first one this part uh, is going to be connected to the drill so I can tighten this part and let's say this one goes here for the other side however I cannot tighten it I can only tighten from one side so these two they have to be attached this one they don't need to be attached so i can replace uh, for example the other wheel or the bigger one but on the other side it has to be attached so now i'm going to glue these things together so this one to here and this one to here one extra note is that i added some hot glue on these trenches because um, when you put them together this uh, this pvc will easily slide over the wood but if you add some kind of rubber or hot glue in this case, then it will not slide. So when you tighten it, then it rotates with the axis. Okay, so let me uh, glue these things together. Wood glue. Alright, so this wheel is a little bit uh, smaller than this pipe because the hole saw that I have it does not exactly fit to this pipe so it's a bit smaller therefore I'm going to add some piece of paper around it and then put some tape on it so that this wheel completely fit into this pipe something like this which I have already created this one fit tightly into the pipe Okay, so these are basically some strips that I cut from a piece of wallpaper and I'm going to attach it to this. Okay, so this is the final wheel that perfectly fits into this pipe and so we can find the exact center of the pipe and avoid uh, the pipe wobble when it rotates. Alright, so I've put everything together. Here is the driving part. This is the coil former which is clamped between these two pieces. Those wheels are also inside. Make sure that this is very much aligned. Um, with the axis in case i want to have a larger coil i can move this one backward and basically use a longer uh, rod screw on the back side also i put a ball bearing so that it rotates smoothly so here is the foot pedal and that is the source so power comes from this source uh, to the foot pedal there is an adjustable speed control um, and it comes back to this driving part so i can with my foot i can control the speed of rotation and basically i can wrap the wire smoothly 
So I use my fingertip to basically align the wires uh, after each other so that we have a very nicely packed um, layer here. So now I'm going to make one coil, this one, and then we can see the performance. Okay, so the winding is now completed. It took me approximately 30 minutes to wrap this winding. Uh, it was the first time that I used this machine, so it's reasonable that it took a bit longer time. Anyway, it was maybe four to five times faster than if I would want to wrap it completely manually. The foot pedal, the driving mechanism, the structure, everything worked perfectly. At the beginning, I used my nail to guide the wires. Uh, but then I changed it to this piece of wood. It worked much better than my nail. But because it's wood, some particles of wood are on, now on the winding, so I have to vacuum it and clean it. Uh, maybe you, we can use a piece of plastic, that would be better. Also, I don't know how many turns are on this winding now, probably around 800, 850. Maybe a good idea would be to add a mechanical counter here, so that every winding that I want to make, I know exactly how many turns uh, are on that. Another important thing is that um, we need to have tension when we wrap the winding. In that case the winding would be very nice and packed. But obviously in this case I don't have a tensioner. Um, this is the coil. I put a piece of a sponge under the coil so that when it wants to rotate it has to press the sponge. So that creates a bit of tension. Maybe in the future I maybe design a tensioner and add it to this uh, device. Another thing is that when the winding is wrapped, the source of wire has to also move. So in this case I moved it manually every now and then, but probably that also has to slide when the winding goes forward. Alright, so that's all for this video. See you next time. Bye!